Shroud of Turin Museum. Alamo Gordo, New Mexico. New Mexico, a beautiful city, and this is a a fantastic place to come to see, to learn about the Shroud and see see one of the very best displays of the Shroud of Turin that one could possibly see. Better than going to Turin, Italy. Oh, well, thank you. Because it's very hard to see the image on linen, the original photos taken by Barry Schwartz in 1978. It is definitely the best photographs of the Shroud. Shroud of Turin Museum. Oh, okay, so you want to do video? All right, so aim it at the green screen. Okay. Okay. And. And this is one of a few models that are left of the VP8 analyzer. Yep. Of, from. That are operating. That were original. Aware of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you built 30 of these in 90 days. Well, I hired a the production crew and we uh, laid out production boards and we laid out production instructions and we literally established a production assembly line. That camera is pointed at that part of the image mm -hmm. and then we can see here that the shades of light and dark are, mapped as are forensically down. accurate to a man approximately 5'11", 170, 180 pounds. Yeah, the way the machine works, if you put something like a checkerboard in front of the camera and ask the machine to map it, it will come out as going up and down because it thinks bright and dark is up and down, so it maps a checkerboard as if it's bumpy. If it maps a human being, such as myself, I get myself in front of the camera. It does not come out 3D. But the shroud does. Amazing. See that that camera was pointed at you, and then we see that we see that the shades of light and dark on a human face do not are not forensically accurate to up and down real dimensions real relief yeah. until you get to the shroud until you get to the shroud this is one of the only the last remnant of what was at one time was a, a flourishing race of vp8 analyzers <laughs> the last of a dying breed <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> Technology passed it up. All right. This image right here, it's just a artist drawing. It was presented on a website as we have now debunked the 3D information on the shroud as being some kind of myth. And this, it was told that this image here has 3D information just like the shroud has this right here. So let's look and see if that's actually, if that was actually a true statement. Okay, right now, the software is gonna analyze the shades of light and dark in this drawing and look for, and let's see if it has accurate depth information. We do that. We're going to use the same settings with every single image. Perspective here, this set there, that's the Z scale. Now let's check. Does this look like perfect 3D info? This does not contain accurate information of the 3D characteristics of this, of this person. It's obviously what I get, it's deformed and it's awkward looking. All right, we're gonna take a look at this very famous painting, The Mona Lisa by Da Vinci, to see if it has accurate depth information. If so, we would see, you know, this figure, the hands and the face and everything to pop out and look right. So let's test this 
image to see if it does contain accurate depth information and here we go and immediately we see you know the same problems that we see in, in any image that we would put up so we're not picking on da Vinci but some people think he had something to do with the image on the shroud which is utterly it's absurd it's ridiculous and it's laughable but da Vinci is a great artist but his paintings do not contain accurate depth information all right scene three this is our third display these are some bodies we, we, we want to see what other bodies look like when they are analyzed by this software and see if they have the same 3D information that the shroud has. And a lot of people falsely, falsely believe that. Well, any old image you put up in there, you can make that look perfect 3D just like the shroud. Let's see if that's true. Again, we're going to use the same settings on every image. Z scale here in the middle. Then we turn this volume down. We're going to see the same pattern repeat itself over and over again. Obviously, the shades of light and dark and these images here, they do not contain accurate depth information. No matter how many times this is said to people or this is presented, there's always a type of person that just, just doesn't believe it. Like, I really don't believe that the Shroud of Turin has this, this great 3D information encoded into the lights and darks. I just, we just don't believe that. I'm sure we could find any old other photograph that has the same thing. Well, so we're going to look at a variety of different images. Okay, this is the photograph. Let's test it. And the way to test it, same settings give fairness, give a fair assessment of every single image. And here we go. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we're not making fun of anyone or trying to make anyone laugh or make fun of Albert Einstein, but this photograph does not contain accurate 3D information. That is obviously extremely deformed and awkward. All right, this is scene seven. This is a painting by Da Vinci. Let's take a look. Does this piece of artwork contain accurate depth information. And we do that very simply by turning this down. Okay, and as we can see immediately, it looks deformed, it looks awkward, it does not contain accurate depth information. All right, this is a full body image of the shroud. This image has been enhanced to some degree and I, I removed and minimized these scorch marks so we can see the depth information on the shroud a little better. Now these scorch marks, that is not part of the original image and that is not a fair assessment to leave these in, but we will leave them in in certain views just so we can show the shroud image as it is without doing any modifications. This is a little bit, this is slightly enhanced, but let's take a look at it on the 3D surface plot. And here we go. I'm gonna move this back just a little bit. We'll put that like there. Okay, this is it. This is the moment of truth. We saw what happened with the Da Vinci paintings and all the other images. When we have done this with other images, we move this down, we see deformities, awkward looking, it's just obviously wrong. But with the shroud, wow, look at that difference. We can see the body images a little more clearly, just a little bit more, a more fair assessment with these scorch marks minimized. The scorch marks on the side, they don't contain depth information. Those we know are wrong. But the body, the body, the body is right reason that this appears to have accurate depth information, the reason it appears to look right is because it is right. It's because it is accurate depth information. The depth information in the shroud is extremely unique and many people think that's it's just not really true. I mean, 
when we analyze the shades of light and dark within this statue head, this is what we get. There's an incredible difference between this and the image in the shroud. Everyone would agree in that. So, again, more proof. Statues, paintings, photographs do not contain 3D information. So, this is these are the settings we've used with everything that we've seen here together. And we move this down, we check for depth information, and we can see, clearly see, man-made images, photographs, paintings, statues, drawings, do not contain 3D information. All right, this is a skeptic replica of the shroud. This particular method was using a statue and paint. Let's test it for depth information. Same settings as we've looked at everything else at. And, you know, obviously it does not have, it does not have accurate depth information. Huge gaps of missing information here. Can't even see the hands at all. It looks wrong because it is wrong. You know, it's just kind of a Occam's razor test here. The reason it looks wrong is because it is. All right, this is another very famous skeptic replica. We're not going to call anyone out by name here. We just want to check these replicas, with all images, and give each image a fair and accurate, truthful assessment and to check for accurate depth information. So to do that, we, we've left it at the same settings that we've done every image with. We turn the gain to maximum, and of course we see the same problem that we've seen with every image we've put up here. All right, now here is an image that looks like this one's gonna work. This, this looks to already have accurate depth information. I mean, it looks good. This looks, this looks right to me. But when the, this software was gonna analyze every pixel of this, all the shades of light and dark, and it's gonna chuck it for accurate 3D depth information. So we wanna know, is there actual 3D depth information encoded into this piece of artwork? And the answer to that question is no. Surprisingly, no. I mean, just looking at this, it looks right, but the shades of light and dark within this image, within this piece of artwork, which is a great piece of artwork, but it does not have depth information encoded into it. The shades of light and dark within this piece of artwork are not accurate to real dimensions. Here is an ordinary, this is a 1931 image of the shroud all the scorch marks on it, nothing done to the image to modify it, just here it is, just like any other image. Let's take a look at this. I'm gonna tilt it here like this so we can see it. We're gonna have the same settings, perspective here, this in the middle, and then turn this one down, this volume down, and this is, this is the asset test right here. This is the moment of truth. Does this image really contain accurate depth information? Presto. It does not distort in any way. Going even a little closer. We can put the perspective to the absolute max. And even take this one. When we move this all the way here to the absolute maximum, that will distort anything. It will utterly distort it completely. But as we can see, the shroud image does not distort. So these scorch marks, the information in the scorch marks is wrong because we know that that's flat. But the body, the body is correct. The body looks right. The body looks right because it is right. Can tilt the image forward and back a little bit, see it from different angles. You can see that the the body just pops out like that. And it doesn't look awkward. It does not look deformed. Even with the artifact that is in the image, when I mean, when I say artifact, I mean the weave of the fabric is also picked up.
by the analyzing software that analyzes every pixel of this image. The shroud return image process was a two-step process. The blood made contact with the linen first, a body to cloth contact image, but the body images over the blood stains, this right here, were created two to three days after the blood. This obviously looks right. There's a reason why this looks right, why it looks accurate. It's because it is. It's exactly what it appears to be. This information that's in the shroud was deliberately, was deliberately done. With it. The creator of this image knew that at a later time in Earth's history, in the 1970s, an instrument called a VP8 analyzer would be manufactured and would discover that the shroud image has 3D properties. This in my belief, in my opinion, in my, in my conviction, I'm convinced this was done as a warning message. It's a sign, it's the sign of Jonah. Just like the sign of Jonah was a warning, a warning to repent before the destruction of the earth. It's an end times image. A warning sign to repent before it's too late. Give the Lord Jesus a chance.